Sibu, I mean, we're moving the story forward. You were talking a little bit earlier on uh, with Kolim Gambi. But from what we are seeing uh, from the, the, uh, Dudu's uh, tweet is that there has been some sort of consultation with the family. She says that we have decided that we're going to be spending time in Nganja and we will escort the uh, former president to, the, uh, you know, to, to jail. What do we read from that tweet? Well, although it's not an official uh, comment from the Zuma family, but Dudu Zile is very close to her father, so we can consider that to be authentic. But it also suggests, if you read that tweet, Tammy, that um, he may hand himself over, because that is the big question. He's got the next five calendar days, and if my uh, arithmetic is correct, that should be until next Tuesday. That is when he has to present himself to either a police station in Gandla or in Johannesburg. So she's suggesting that he will either serve in, uh, I'm not sure whether she's saying he will present himself there or if given a choice he will serve his sentence in Gandla. Because if he does not do that by next Tuesday, then the Minister of Police and the National Commissioner have three days to basically effect an arrest. And I think the next 10 days, including this, this weekend, will be a very um, interesting period. Uh, we all don't know how it's going to unfold. We know we've seen um, some MKMVA types outside Ghana before, but if you listen to the president um, declaring a lockdown level four, there no gatherings are allowed. But does that then mean that the police will risk trying to remove people gathered outside Ghana and risk uh, fanning those, um, th those flames? Those are the big questions. I mean, but if you listen to the court earlier, the big question, and in fact, how Judge Sisika Bebe started that judgment, talking about the fact that the law must be seen to be without eyes. It must be, in her words, impervious to public comments and political commentary. So what then happens over the next 10 days is anyone's guess, but we will be here, Tammy, um, as that story unfolds. With your count of five days being uh, next week, Tuesday, you are obviously counting them as working days. Yes. Um, is there clarity on that? Is it five working days or is it five days? Because I think if it's I, five I, days, then we're looking at around Sunday or so. I think I heard the judge say it's five um, working days or five uh, business days. Um, but, but I stand correct. I can go back and listen to that. But that was, that was my calculation that they would factor in. That would exclude this weekend, which then means that that five days comes up or expires on the Tuesday. So if we're looking at uh, Duduzile Zuma's tweet there, uh, as, as you said, she's very close to her father. And in that tweet, she uses the inclusive that we have spoken and that this is what we have decided as a family. It sounds then that there is no resistance from uh, former President Jacob Zuma. Um, and that really does put him in the, the position of a, a, a martyr in, in some sort of ways, because he has said before that he would rather gladly go to prison than be part of something that he believes is unconstitutional and that he has unfairly uh, been, been positioned against. I don't think so, Tammy. I don't think it presents him as, as a matter of source. The reality is that um, President Zuma is the author of his uh, misfortune, really. Uh, and I think that where he has been given an opportunity repeatedly, as the court said, to actually abide by the court, uh, by the court's decision, he has failed to do so. Because remember, President Zuma has an issue which is expressed publicly with the Deputy Chief Justice. And then the, he, then the matter goes to the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court rules that he should present himself before the, uh, the, the Deputy Chief Justice. The expectation of anyone who's law-abiding, contrary to what he claims, is that he would bumble, kick and scream, but still present himself to the commission out of respect of the highest court in the land. So the defiance of not just the commission but the constitutional court has actually dire consequences. And I think that for any discerning um, South Africans, they would understand why it is important for anyone, every member of society, to actually respect our courts, but more importantly, to respect our constitution. And if you look at it, Tammy, I mean, the, the, the impunity, the, the, any sense of impunity cascading down to the lower levels of society can only breed anarchy. If the court is seen to be lenient to someone of Jacob Zuma's caliber, then what implications does that have for an ordinary South African? We already see South Africans who are restless, who are um, protesting, and those protests are violent protests, 
and they damage public infrastructure, and there is grow, uh, rising cases of vigilantism, which all talk to lawlessness and, and, and ordinary South Africans not respecting the laws of the country. So at, at, the, at a basic level, I think anyone who understands um, the importance of the rule of law will actually not see it that way. Let's bring in a Dr. Nsigileno Breakfast, a senior lecturer at the Department of History and Political Studies at the Nelson Mandela University. Dr. Brest, it's a very good afternoon to you and thank you for your time today. I'm here with uh, my, my colleague, Asmu Ungalwa. He is our politics edit here, editor here. And, and we are talking about the issue of President Jacob Zuma now being sentenced to 15 months uh, behind bars. We've also just read a tweet that came out to Dr. Breakfast from the MKMVA, Carl Nihar, saying that they are not in agreement with this entire judgment, that they are very strongly and vehemently uh, putting their case forward and noting uh, their discontent. What, what do we make of this? Well, I think, um, first of all, the, the judgment is a, is a historical um, milestone. Um, it's, it's an important uh, judgment because it uh, affirms the centrality of the rule of law, um, constitutionalism, um, and so on. I think there is no way the Constitutional Court could have turned a blind eye to the behavior of um, Sholos because it would have meant that if someone else in future um, does the same thing, um, the, Constitution, the Constitutional Court would not have been able then uh, to hold such a, um, a person. So they had to um, crack the whip and, and, and uh, deliver the, um, the punishment. So obviously, um, I think the, um, the, 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 the ruling is going to uh, you know, spill over um, to some of the factional uh, battles of um, the ANC. But I don't think that um, uh, Jacob Zuma is going to hand over himself uh, to the nearest uh, police station because I've seen some men and women in uniform and out of uniform outside his uh, a compound uh, saying that they are, you know, prepared to engage in any uh, conflict with uh, uh, police uh, officers. And, and, and that is quite an important issue. We were talking about that just a moment ago as to how exactly will the president react? Will he voluntarily report to the Johannesburg or Nkandla police stations or will he wait for the officials to come and, and, and get him from Nkandla? I think Dr. Breakfast actually makes a good point because um, so far Mr. Zuma has played hardball and he has made it clear that if he can, he will drag this until the very end. That's why the tweet by his daughter, I, I caution to say that um, it's still not the official word. And it may well be that there's ambiguity in that tweet where she says that they will serve time closer to home, which is Nganda. It might suggest that he's going to present himself over at Nganda or once he's um, arrested, if it gets to that point, he will opt if he's given that option to serve his sentence um, closer to home. But I think, uh, uh, Tammy, the, the question actually that, uh, that I have um, for, for Dr. Br uh, Breakfast, flowing exactly from the last point he made about the, how this will influence ANC politics. I mean, the ANC finds itself in a, difficult, in a difficult position. One, it is a governing party which has expressed its support for the Zondo Commission and the Constitutional Court. But at the same time, it, it cannot not be seen to be sympathetic to its former president. How best do you think the ANC should navigate this difficult situation? Well, your guess is uh, as good as mine. And this is a very complex matter. It's not a very, uh, you know, a simplistic matter. Um, uh, because uh, the former President Zuma did not do what he should have done, which is to go to um, the commission. You can't appoint a commission, and then when you see that things don't go according to plan, then you want to uh, pull out. Um, so he is um, at fault. Um, but at the same time, um, in the light of, I think, uh, the, the agenda of the, the president to enhance unity um, and so on, you also don't want to, uh, to be uh, abrasive. Uh, to say things that will escalate the magnitude of uh, the conflict. So there are also other political uh, factors that one must take into uh, account. 
but I can't give you a straightforward answer. So, um, unfortunately, it's a complex uh, uh, matter, and, 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 and if it is not managed uh, properly, it can be worse. You mentioned, Dr. Breakfast, the impact that this is likely to have on the internal party politics within the African National Congress, the issues of factionism. But I'd like you to perhaps uh, cast your net a little bit wider as to how this will impact the ANC from the public's uh, perception and the public's perspective, what impact this will have on that level. Yeah, um, on that score, I don't think that it will affect... Uh, the um, image of the ANC um, in, in public, I think the majority of people will be over the moon that uh, a ruling of this uh, nature has been uh, delivered. Uh, I, I think many people would have had uh, broken hearts if uh, the Constitutional Court had turned a blind eye to the behavior of uh, Msholozi because it would have meant that some people uh, are superior than um, other people. So I think, by and large, people will welcome the uh, judgment. Uh, so I don't think that the, the, the image of the ANC is going to be affected negatively um, uh, by this. And, and before we let you go, uh, Dr. Breakfast, we have seen and heard previously the supporters of the former president saying that should this be the outcome, should the former president actually go to prison, that they will basically mete out any sort of violence. How likely is this to happen? Yeah, um, like I said, I mean, uh, we've seen men and women uh, who are not members of the SANTF in uniform, you know, outside the compound of uh, Sholuzi. So I don't know if that is the sign that a conflict might break out, um, but I don't think that they're going to take this uh, lying down. I, I, I anticipate that something ugly might happen. Dr. Breakfast, thank you very much uh, for your insights this afternoon.